you're about to discover 10 unusual laws you could unexpectedly break while cruising. I'm Gary Bemich. This is another of my cruising tips for travelers. I want to take a look at a whole bunch of laws which you may find you end up breaking without even realizing you're breaking when you're going on a cruise. Some of them which can have incredibly serious consequences. The first of these is around camouflage. Many, many countries in the world, in fact, about 11 countries in the world, ban the wearing of camouflage clothing in their countries. And many of those are in the Caribbean, so particularly if you're cruising in the Caribbean. So you can't wear anything that's camouflage designed or in fact, anything that looks like a military uniform as well. So in the Caribbean, for example, it's banned in Antigua, Barbados, Grenada, Jamaica, St. Lucia, Trinidad, and Tobago. You'll also find it's banned in some places in Asia, like in the Philippines, a lot of the countries in the Middle East it's banned. And if you even go on a river cruise in Africa, for example, you'll find in Zimbabwe, you, it is banned as well. So camouflage, do not take with you, leave at home if you're going on a cruise. A second one which a lot of people can potentially fall foul of is by taking either over-the-counter drugs which are legal in your country, so the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, wherever, or even prescription drugs which are illegal and could give you a serious jail sentence or fines if you're caught with these products out and about. Obviously, if you're on a cruise, the chances they're going to be in your cabin, so you should be okay. But do bear in mind there is a lot of rules and regulations around what you can take, and some of them are quite surprising. The key areas that you need to focus on if you are taking medicines with you on a cruise is around the area of painkillers, particularly strong painkillers like codeine or tramadol, sleeping pills like demazepan. But even once you get into things like cough mixtures or things you might think are less harmful, like codeine, for example, you'll find is banned in many countries, including Greece, Japan, and certain some of the countries in Asia. Even some really well-known brand names are also going to get you into trouble. Some of them include things like Sudafed, Benadryl, in some countries in Vicks inhaler, like in Japan, even Tylenol arthritis pain capsules. The key places to really worry about this is if you're heading on a cruise in Japan, parts of the Middle East, some parts of Asia, you're going to find that you get into a lot of trouble. The key thing I always say if you're taking particularly prescription drugs is make sure you keep them in the original bottles and ideally have a prescription or a little note from your doctor. But certainly if you're going on a cruise, particularly somewhere a little bit exotic, make sure that you are 100% sure that you can take those drugs in. Most governments have a list of the things that you can and can't take in. But if in doubt, just you know, search the name of what you're taking in and the country or countries that you're cruising to. If you are a smoker or even more importantly, a vapor, you may find there are very strong restrictions on your ability to do that in some countries. So particularly as you think about going on excursions, really understand the rules around smoking or vaping in the countries that you are. There are a whole lot of countries that actually ban vaping totally and actually bringing vaping equipment into the country could get you really big fines. For example, at the time of recording this, is actually banned in Brazil, Singapore, Seychelles, Uruguay, Thailand, and India. You can get huge big fines. So for example, in Singapore, the fines could be as much as $2,000. So that's about 1,000 pounds for possessing them. So certainly if you're going on cruises, be really clear if vaping equipment is allowed as you head out and about. Also smoking, increasingly countries are becoming more and more strict. So some countries, for example, ban smoking in places like beaches. So for example, in Thailand, you cannot smoke on the beach. A lot of people are just used to, you know, walking out with the equipment, particularly with vaping, watch out, you could be breaking the law and have really big fines. The fourth area to think about is public shows of affection. Now this tends to be in more strict religious countries, so particularly if you're heading to the Middle East, but certainly to parts of Asia like Indonesia, places like that, it is actually not allowed, it's really frowned upon and could have very serious consequences. And that's not only for LGBT couples where there could be some issues around whether it's even legal to have those kind of relationships, but even for heterosexual couples is a big issue. I remember recently we were cruising into Dubai and there was a big briefing around not only clothing, but also about discouraging and saying, don't have public shows of affection. You can get into a lot of trouble. So bear in mind, if you're heading out, you may just want to keep your shows of affection to the cruise ship. There are, of course, some also cultural areas we need to be careful in Japan. For example, lots of public shows of affection is not really well thought of. And certainly, if you're going on a cruise in the Baltics into Russia, I would discourage you, if you are a same-sex couple, from having 
and showing signs of affection because of the pretty draconian approach of the Russian authorities. The next area is even around taking photographs. Now, when you're heading out on excursions, and particularly if you're going with a tour guide, you can check if there are any restrictions on taking photographs. But generally speaking, anything to do with airports, military, government buildings, avoid taking photographs of those. I have certainly been on various different excursions in different countries where the guide has said to us, like, don't take pictures of those buildings, don't take pictures of those facilities. So just be kind of aware and be very cautious about what you're taking photographs of. There have been, for example, in the Middle East, plane spotters, you know, enthusiasts who've been out taking pictures of airplanes and found themselves actually in prison for days and days on end and being treated as spies. So be really cautious about where you're taking photographs and very sensitive. Anything that's government, anything that's military, kind of avoid taking pictures of. And also very importantly, of uh, military people or even things like monks. People like that, again, be very cautious about taking photographs. And even if you're unsure, ask, don't just take pictures. So for example, I'm just back from a cruise in Vietnam and Cambodia, and we were told very strongly, don't just take pictures of monks. You need to approach them and ask them if you can take pictures of seen as very offensive to do that otherwise. The next area is around drones. Now, taking a drone on a cruise ship is a pretty much of a nightmare anyway. Most cruise lines ban the use of drones completely. Royal Caribbean and Carnival are pretty much at the time of recording the only cruise lines that will even let you take a drone on board. You can't actually use it when you're on board, they will let you take it out into the port and, and bring it back. But actually taking a drone on a cruise is probably a bad idea anyway, because it's banned by so many people I really struggle with when I can take my drone. But there are lots of countries that have not only severe restrictions, but some total bans on using a drone. Of course, there are some very highly publicized things where some bloggers got caught in places like Iran flying drones. So be really cautious about going on a drone. If you do own a drone, make sure you've got the license. You'll often find in many places you have to apply for permits before you go. So be really, really cautious. Of course, if you use a drone, you know there's lots of apps where you can check, but drone flying, really big issue. There's also a lot of laws where you can get yourself into a lot of trouble around the sort of clothing that you wear. A lot of places have introduced restrictions around going shirtless, for example, or wearing swimming trunks off the beaches into the town. So even places like in Turkey, there's some restrictions. Spain, there's been some restrictions. So places that you would think were quite liberal because they're quite beach focused, have some abilities to basically spot fine you if you wear that sort of clothing off the beach. Also, for example, in Croatia, in Dubrovnik, going shirtless in the town could get you in a lot of trouble. You could get spot fines as well. So again, keep your clothes on unless you're on the beach is the key rule. Although it's not illegal as such, you're not gonna break any laws, Bear in mind if you're going to religious places, particularly as you head into Asia, or even in very really holy places in parts of Europe, you need to have your shoulders and your upper arms covered and you need to have long pants or certainly cover your knees. So lots of restrictions around there. It's not illegal, but you are gonna have problems if you don't follow those rules. One of the most serious laws that you could break that you could find yourself in prison for up to 10 years is if you ever cruise to Thailand, criticizing the royal family and people overhearing you or standing even on a note which has the royal family on could get you into a lot of trouble. There's very, very strict laws around defaming the royal family and they are really, really rigorous at doing that. So bear in mind also when you head into any country, very cautious and don't criticize the government or leaders in public spaces because you could find yourself in a lot of lot of trouble. There's also surprisingly a lot of rules and regulations about eating and drinking in public. Now in some countries it's culturally seen as unacceptable, but more and more places are starting to introduce laws and regulations, sometimes just by local towns or municipalities, where you can actually get some quite big fines. So in Europe, for example, there's quite a lot of restrictions on eating and drinking in some public spaces, particularly around religious sites or holy sites. So for example, you'll find then in Florence and Venice, it's an offense to eat and drink near churches, historic monuments, public buildings. And there's a recent story about some backpackers that were fined almost a thousand euros for brewing and making coffee near the Rialto Bridge. So there are increasingly really strict rules and regulations. In some places, there's lots of rules and regulations around drinking in public or on public transport. So be aware and check those regulations. In Singapore, for example, chewing gum is a real big no-no and particularly the disposing of chewing gum. So if you're in Singapore, stay well away from chewing gum. 
Linked to the whole food and drink thing, there's even a very bizarre rule which you can come across in Singapore, whereas if you do not flush the public lavatory, you could potentially have a spot fine. So bear in mind, there are unusual and strange laws that you could stumble across and quite innocently break. So just think about being really disciplined about where you eat, where you drink, and just check. What I often do, if I'm unsure in the country, is look around and see what the locals are doing. If the locals aren't walking around eating a sandwich or drinking or whatever, you probably know it's not appropriate. And it's possibly a law, if certainly not a cultural issue. As you can see, many of these rules, regulations, and laws that could land you in trouble are things that we can quite innocently do at home. Uh, but they could land you in a lot of trouble when you're on a cruise in a foreign place. So really be overcautious when you're heading out there. As I said, watch what locals are doing, ask the guest services, and certainly if you're on a tour, check with the tour guide if there's any little quirks and things that you like to break. Hope you found that helpful. Hope you found that interesting. I have loads more videos packed with tips, advice about cruising. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?